Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Buddha is the light in your home. We'll talk about Buddha. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Buddha is the light in your home. It's 8.30 in Nigeria, it's 9.30 here in sunny Egypt, and I think it's 11.30 in the Gulf. But you guys know what time it is. It's time for viewers' Paul, so give me a call live at 002-0238-555-248 or 9. If you're calling from uh, sunny Egypt, just drop the country code. Otherwise, you guys know the number, and we're live, and we have a special guest, you guys. But before I introduce him, let me remind you with the contact information as well, which is pauls at hudav.tv. That's my email. Email me back. Uh, email me, and I'll email you back, inshallah, with your thoughts, opinions, and feedback, you guys. Email me all that stuff. Of course, we have Facebook.com slash Huda TV or Huda.tv. That's our main mechanism. So please uh, support us on Facebook and like it and share it with your Muslim and non-Muslim friends. As well as, uh, what else do we have? The email, Facebook. I guess that's it, you guys. Let me introduce our special guest. Uh, he is a public uh, uh, public speaker, uh, a da'i presently living in North America, as well as an engineer. And he's a host of one of our new programs, which will be airing, inshallah, in the month of Ramadan. So you know it's going to be good, inshallah. I'm talking about my brother, Majid Mahmoud. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Thank you for joining me. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much for hosting. I certainly appreciate uh, your time. I know you're busy. You're filming. Uh, your, your new program, which we'll, we will be talking about, uh, we will talk about, inshallah. Uh, perhaps you can talk a little bit about yourself, because this program is about giving the viewers a little bit of personal information. Mm -hmm. sure. And who are you? Who is the presenter who, who, who presenting these shows? They want to know that stuff. So perhaps you can tell us a little bit about where you're born, your education, your occupation, your Islamic background with reg regarding uh, knowledge, uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, brother. Go ahead. Sure. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for... Uh watching this program may Allah reward you for preparing it may Allah reward you for I heard the person became Muslim yeah but yeah that's the thank you for reminding me uh, yes 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 and this is a blessing of Allah alhamdulillah and uh, thank you for reminding if you don't mind me interrupting you brother I, I just want to remember we should thank all the viewers who can do, who donate money and Absolutely. the workers because it's a Absolutely. big a lot of people do work here work here so I'm the one who took the shahada over the phone but that's just because I'm, I'm sitting in this chair Allah so Allah. We, we want to thank all the people on the TV and all Absolutely. the viewers so thank you for reminding me go ahead brother Absolutely. <laughs> alhamdulillah alhamdulillah Amen. So, as you mentioned, my name is Majid. Uh, I was born in Saudi Arabia, okay. where I learned the basics of theology, tawheed, aqeed, uh, fiqh, hadith, tafsir, and so on, for about nine years or so. Then I immigrated to Canada during high school. So I had my high school uh, in Canada. Uh, I learned also some Islamic studies through Al-Maghrib Institute and Al-Bayina Institute. They teach Arabic, Islamic studies, and so on. Finished about 40 classes plus 45 with Al-Bayina combined. So then I went for my bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering at the University of Windsor. And then I moved to the master's degree in business administration, the MBA program at Michigan, United States of America. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I was continuing with the Maghrib Institute and Al-Bayina and I work as an engineer at Chrysler Automotive. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Nah, alhamdulillah. So yeah. this is basically it. And I'm married, alhamdulillah, with okay. uh, two daughters. Alhamdulillah, wonderful. mashallah. Nah. So this is pretty much uh, background. You told me something very interesting living in, in, in Canada but working in the States. How does that work? Crossing the border every day. Yeah, so uh, Windsor and Detroit are neighbor cities. Okay. So literally speaking, it takes me about five minutes to cross the borders. Okay. Yeah, so then they get used to you. So they know you, Majid, they know you by name at one, at one yeah. point in time. <laughs> and they get used to it and they don't feel the burden anymore. Okay, cool. Excellent. No. Uh, very interesting. Well, wonderful. Well, now you're with us here at Huda TV filming an all-new program, which we hope, I believe, to air in the month of Ramadan. Please start by giving us a little information about the program. Perhaps uh, you can start by giving us the title of the program. Mm -hmm. Who chose the title and why? What mm -hmm. message are you trying to impart to the viewers uh, with this title, inshallah? Absolutely. So the title is Only If You Knew. So even just reading the title, you wish, like, knew what yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. And that's the purpose of it, is just actually to pe people think, only if you knew what. And the program focuses on Allah's beautiful names. Only if you knew Allah's beautiful names. So sometimes people go through distress. And it's only if you knew Allah, Al-Jabbar, for example, that you would have felt comfortable. Some people, they need a request to be accepted, to be made as soon as possible. Only if you knew Allah, Al-Mujib, the acceptor of your requests, you would feel better. Some people, they're in need of mercy. I would say only if you knew Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, you would have felt that mercy coming to you. And we made the show in a way that is very practical, that those who view it can see it and make it practical to our lives, and not just only theory. 
Wonderful. I like that. Yeah. Only if you knew. That's very catchy and clever. Yeah. We well, ask a lot to accept, inshallah. And, I mean, and we, we actually have prepared Brother Ahmed Ali, my good friend, working hard behind the scenes, yes, has prepared this clip for us. So perhaps we can take a look at it and you can explain yes, to the viewers. Yes, you guys check out this clip from an all new program, Only If You Knew. So stay tuned to Viewers Pulse. <laughs> How will we feel when we learn about Allah's beautiful 99 names? And Allah is the best of examples. May Allah protect you. Nothing. So why are we learning about Allah's beautiful names? Only if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that your love to Allah will continue to increase. And the more you love Allah, obeying Him becomes easier and sweeter for you. And therefore, you will be happier in this life and the afterlife, inshallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you, don't forget about Allah. Because those who forget Allah, Allah will make them forget themselves. Allah said in the Quran, Bismillah ar rahim وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ Don't be among those who forgot about Allah, which in result, caused, Allah caused them to forget about themselves. Because those who do not know Allah, their life is meaningless because they have no purpose in life. Because Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I created you for no other reason except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how can you worship someone you don't even know? Welcome back to the pause, brother. That, that's an amazing clip. Can you talk to us about it? Oh, um, which episode that was, what exactly the topic was. Uh, go ahead. Sure. So this was part of the introduction, talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because many people ask the question, what's so special about learning about Allah's beautiful names? And there's a lot of meaning behind it. Every single knowledge in Islam, pay attention to this one, is based on Allah's beautiful names. The fiqh is based on Allah's beautiful names. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created Adam alayhi salam, He said, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught Adam all names. And logically speaking, what name will he start with? Telling him the tree is a tree, or the chair is a chair, and the angel is the angel, or by telling Allah, with him, what Allah beautiful names are. SubhanAllah. Very, SubhanAllah. That's what the ulama Ibn al-Qayyim talks about it. Uh, Asma al-Asbahani, they talk about the importance, the pillars of the whole Tawheed is on it. So when I say those who don't know Allah, then Allah causes them not to know themselves. And what's interesting, it comes in Surah Al-Hashr. And Surah Al-Hashr, at the end of it, right a few verses after the one I mentioned, Allah talks about Allah's beautiful name. So, Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu alimu al-ghaybi wa al-shahad huwa ar-rahman ar-rahim adhin al-malik al-quddus al-salam. And there's no verse in the Quran that encompasses these many names as much as Surah Al-Hashr. So, Allah is connecting it. How do I know you, Allah? Wait, read some verses. Now you find how to know me through Allah's beautiful names. That's wonderful. And I, and I like the format of the program as well. Can you t speak a little bit about the format? Why are you standing up? Why do you have a studio audience? I think that's a really nice change at Huda TV that's because true. oftentimes, we put a, a gentleman on the, on the, on the, on the sofa, no. and it's not as interactive. Okay, so one of the reasons I, I, I like to stand is it gives me more energy. Because, you know, when you're, when you're on TV, you're not as close to the person as in real life. So I can talk to you as sitting on a chair for, many t for a lot of time, but on a TV, I have to more, put a lot of more energy. So part of me, like, talking loudly and being, like, awake and so on, because when, you when you're sitting, you're more relaxed. Having the audience is another thing. Now, talking to people makes you feel and understand how they're feeling towards your speech. If you see someone smiling, you're like, Alhamdulillah, so far so good. If you see someone is laughing, Alhamdulillah, so far so good. You see him crying, like, man, this is good, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so you feel with them, right? right? You feel like dozing off, you raise your voice. So you feel the audience that are watching. Otherwise, you're just talking to the camera and you just don't know how they feel. Am I doing okay? Are you guys with me? Is someone falling asleep back there? And oh, again, when you see interaction, and different faces. I'm sure now that camera right now, sometimes it puts on you, yeah. puts on me and so on. So people just to change their image. Yeah, sure, so sure. Great point. So what did you find more difficult thus far, uh, given the, the khutbah and being a public speaker or sitting in front of the, uh, the camera? It, 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 what's more difficult for you? Generally, in front of a camera is dif more difficult. Because of the things that you had just mentioned, the interaction yes. issues. Yes. Okay, I was like to ask that question yes. because it seems uh, it's an interesting one. Okay, so you, the format of the show, I like it. You have the, you have the interaction there uh, and you're standing up and that, that's, that's very good. It's very active. Let's go uh, into uh, the program itself. You talk about the night, you want to mention the beautiful names of Allah. Yeah. However, you only have, uh, I believe, probably perhaps 30 episodes or 26 episodes. So how are you going to manage and, 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 and conduct yourself with regards to, the, to that? 
So beautiful point. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 names, which is correct. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has much more than 99 names. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he makes a dua, I ask you Allah by every name that you named yourself. Whether that name has been presented to us in the Quran or you've hidden it in the unseen. So what we can know is only so much of Allah's beautiful names. And with these episodes, I open the door a little bit slightly for the viewers to show them the importance. And inshallah, I'm very positive by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that their life will change inshallah okay. with a few names and then they will open the door to go and read more through themselves after some time inshallah. I'm sure this takes a lot of preparation. I mean, how many hours are you putting in preparing? Because I see you're very organized and you're very, uh, um, you're very focused on this, on this uh, series. So mm -hmm. how, what's your preparation looking like? Uh, how many hours are you putting in? Usually I don't answer that question. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> but uh, alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. well worth the re Alhamdulillah, I've, I've spent a lot of time. Yeah, and inshallah, you will you'll receive a great reward for that. And we hope to end Ramadan as well to have a positive Amen. impact. Amen. We're going to take a short break. You stay with me, brother. And you guys at home, stay tuned for more uh, viewers' pause. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the Pause, Brother Maj. We're talking about your new program and we're definitely excited about it. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, you are filming it now. How many episodes have you completed and how many episodes will you reach? Inshallah, inshallah we'll reach minimum of 26, okay. maximum 30, inshallah. Okay, and how, how, many have you filmed, how many have you filmed thus far? Uh, 16. Okay, great. You're making good time. A lot of the viewers can't see you're actually recording them just behind the set here. Yeah. So that's great. And um, let's talk about, first of all, the value of learning about Allah because, as you know, many of us are chasing uh, secular degrees perhaps and we, we lose sight of the Islamic learning. Absolutely. Sheikh Yasser Qadi has a beautiful statement. He says, The nobility of science is proportional to the object of study. So basically now in terms of, let's say for your understanding, what's higher level generally by the public view? A doctor or engineer? Perhaps a doctor. Doctor. Okay. Why? Because the object of study is more noble than the object of study of an engineer. The object of study of the doctor is the human body. Right. So the society prefers him over the engineer right. who the object of body is machines, software, materials, and so on. And there's anything in the world more majestic and noble than studying Allah's beautiful names. So when you study Allah's beautiful 99 names and as much as you can, then you become above the engineer, above the doctor at that point of time when you study Allah about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the ma majesty that falls, you feel a sense of honor that who are we to talk about Allah and how humble you feel when you know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, you have a wonderful way of speaking. The, uh, I like the way you put that in perspective. We have another uh, clip. I want you to check it out with me and then sure. we'll explain to the viewers. You guys stay tuned for another clip of our all new program on, on Hoodie TV that you don't want to miss this Ramadan. But Brother Majid Mahmoud, only if you knew. You knew. So check it out. And when Allah al wakil comes and you do believe in that name of Allah and you truly knew Him, and only if you knew Him, you will be called what? When you put your trust in Allah, you, have a, you will have a title. And it is one of the Prophet Sallallahu names. Uh, and it is? Mu'min. Of course, al al mutawakkil Excellent. So good job. Al-Mu'min al mutawakkil al mutawakkil the one who placed their trust in Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. What does al mutawakkil mean? And may Allah make us amongst the mutawakkileen. And you know why I began with this one right here, the first name? So as we get to know Allah more and more, that putting in His trust in Allah becomes easier on us because we get to know Allah more and more. Al Mutawakkil is the one who takes every possible mean to accomplish their goal. And once they finish everything they can do, they what? Hasbi Allah wa Na'mal Wakil. Allah, I put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never stop. Again, never stop. Whether you're recording, whether you're playing with the lights, the Ali Sallallahu no matter what you're doing, صح? He was the Sayyid al mutawakkilin the best of mutawakkilin When he would take the means, he would not be scared from anyone. One time he went and rested under a tree, and he was along, around the Sahaba, they were around, maybe a little distance, and then he hung his sword on a tree branch. So he took the means and he took a nap. He's not expecting anyone to come over and do anything to him. All of a sudden, a person from the Kuffar comes, grabs the sword and puts it on the neck of Rasulullah and the Prophet wakes up and he tells him Man yamna'uka minni. who's gonna stop you from me now al mutawakkil his heart is connected to Allah so you know what the Prophet said Allah 
So the sword dropped. Then the Prophet grabbed the sword, put it on his neck. He said, وَمَنْ يَمْنَعُكَ مِنِّي And who will stop you from me? He said, كُنْ خَيْرَ آخِذْ Come on, be gentle. I didn't do anything to you. I only put the sword on you. The Prophet ﷺ said, أَتَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ لَلَّهُ وَأَنِي مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Would you testify that there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Prophet Muhammad ﷺ is a slave and messenger? What did he say? He said, no. The Prophet said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Welcome back to the Pulse, brother. That was a wonderful clip. Can you talk to us a little bit about it? So we're saying when we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're divided into two components, the body and the heart and your soul. The body takes all the means possible. You want to take a class, you want to do the best marks ever, then you go to class, you ask your professor, you do this and that, and you take all possible means, then your heart is placed in trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So technically your heart is not attached to the means. When you go to the doctor, it's not the doctor who cures you. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-shafi, the cure of all sicknesses. But, that, but your actions show that it's a doctor who cures you. The heart, no, it's not him. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But make sure you don't go to the doctor, you tell him, it's not you who cures me. Huh? <laughs> right, He's right. like, go away, it's like, right. subhanallah. Right, it's just something in your heart that you have to pay attention to. And, and this was in the beginning of the series or the middle of the series? Which episode was this in? Al-Wakil is the first name I begin with, which is the third episode. Okay, great. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And the set looks nice, but MashaAllah, Huda TV is doing a good job as well. So what about, but somebody, somebody might say, listen, um, what's the importance of learning the 99 names? Because we can just memorize them. In fact, I heard Sheikh Amar say, uh, you can train a parrot to repeat after yourself. So, so why just memorize the 99 <coughs> names? I mean, some people might say that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Allah belong 99 names, 100 minus 1. Man ahsaha dakhla al-jannah. When it's translated, they say whoever memorized it enters Jannah. But that's not really in a correct translation. The understanding, when I talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's two understandings, the shallow understanding and the more ex ex like extensive, major understanding, which that's what we're trying to achieve. And that's what the Prophet is saying. teaching us to achieve. For example, you drink a cup of water. The shallow understanding is you drink it to, qu to quench your thirst and survive. You succeeded, check mark, on that minor understanding. But the major one, the Prophet tells you, no. Before you drink, you say what? Bismillah. Bismillah, in the name of Allah. You live that drink. You think of Allah when you drink. You think of the provider, which is Ar-Razzaq when you drink. And when you're done, Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah. To the one, the Ar-Razzaq, the one who gave me the water. Imagine that's your life, always conscious of Allah when you drink and eat. So that's the understanding that we try to do whenever we go through Allah's beautiful names. And what would the results be if someone who didn't know uh, and understand the, the 99 names and with their understanding and then he, he or she learned them and their understanding what would the result what would the change be yeah. in that person result inshallah by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees a person trying to get closer to Allah to the king Allah says if you walk to me will Allah wait and welcome you no will Allah walk to the person who is walking to Allah no Allah will run to you authentic hadith because you're trying to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best thing to learn is about His beautiful names. We expect that inshallah and those who learn it, and alhamdulillah, I've done this series before back in Canada. Alhamdulillah, it's online. I've done it multiple times. And alhamdulillah, the results of the brothers and sisters, life-changing experience. Not, uh, not because of me, a'udhu billah. I'm just means. But their heart is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that's the most beautiful thing. The love to Allah increases to the max. For example, there's a lady by the name of Al-Khansa during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Before she became a Muslim, she had her brother named Sakhar. When he died, she was so sad, she was weeping and crying and wailing, and she wrote poetry that went viral. Literally, like someone uploads a, YouTube, a video on YouTube, yeah, it yeah. went millions and billions. That's exactly how Al-Khansa was. And then she's so famous. Until today, her poetry can be seen online. And she shows how sad she was because her brother died. She becomes Muslim. She knows Allah. She knows His beautiful names. At one time, four of her children, they get killed in jihad for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does she respond at that time? You know what she said? She's the one who wrote poetry about her brother. And what's closer? Brother, sister relationship or a mother and son? Mother and son. So now we expect her to pull her hair, suicide or something. She said, Alhamdulillah. All thanks due to Allah, the one who honored me to grant me four shuhada in my family. And then she concluded and she said, and I ask Allah to gather me with them under his mercy in the akhirah. So how can she be like that? How can she be patient? She, only if she knew. Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Al-Jabbar, Al-Wakil, I should have had this love to Allah. Yeah, but that's a beautiful, beautiful example. Thank you for sharing that. 
What about future programs, brother? Uh, this show, mashallah, seems to be very successful but by the will of Allah. Uh, do you have any future programs in mind for the TV or any ideas moving forward? Huda TV, uh, specifically, nothing in mind so far. Or, or, or in general, perhaps. We can in general, alhamdulillah, yani, there's, a, there's a program. It's, uh, I know people will be very interested in this one, mashallah. So if you like it, make sure you say mashallah. There's a program, mashallah, <laughs> uh, like a convention, like a small one, a workshop, uh, Love Before Marriage. Oh, great. Yes. Yeah, so great, how yeah. someone says, okay, how can I get married if I don't love the person before marriage? Right, of course. And, so, and, and to be honest, it's a very logical question. Sure. How can you spend a life with, your, uh, with a person you don't, know you don't even know them yet? Sometimes <laughs> they don't even see them. So yeah, well, that's a problem. <laughs> uh, so, inshallah, this is inshallah going to come up oh, soon, inshallah. Okay, great. That, that's, uh, we'll definitely look out for that. As yeah. far as contact information for people that want to watch some videos yes. or, or even contact you, can you share with, the, with them your Facebook account Absolutely. and the Twitter account and YouTube? And perhaps the brothers can put that on the screen. Sure. So, uh, my Facebook account is the most, uh, like, uh, exposure that it has okay and um, I it's, it's basically facebook.com slash Majid Mahmoud uh, and how are you spelling that brother because uh, sure Majid M-A-J-E-D M-A-H-M-O-U-D okay yeah. and before we, we go on with your, your contact information brother I, I apologize but we do have a phone call sure. from Peter from the USA and I always love when Peter calls because before I accepted Islam, I changed my name to Malik. My name was actually Peter. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, brother Peter. Thank you for calling. How are you, brother? Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much. Brother, how's, how is California treating you? How is the weather in California, brother? Alhamdulillah. It's beautiful here as always. So I'm <laughs> a little cool. All but right. Good to see you. I just happened to turn on a Buddha from the Facebook uh, Catch You Live, and I thought I had to reach out and say hello. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, explain to you that we have a beautiful little Islamic center here in Lampok, and we're making more Dawa than ever. And I just wanted to share that with you. What, brother, where, what, what city did you say? I couldn't quite hear you. Oh, if you can't hear me very well, basically, uh, I just wanted to repeat that I appreciate your show. Uh, I wanted to express that we're making more Dawa than ever here in Central California. And uh, we appreciate your show. We'd like to put it on our local broadcasting channels if at all possible little tidbit can we have permission to do that well brother you know what i would like you to do peter if you could just simply email me so i can contact you after the show for for i'm sure we can facilitate that for you but it would take a little bit more discussion can you perhaps uh, leave your email with the brothers in the control room uh who put you through if they can just if you can just leave your email with them brother peter and we can we can work something out inshallah or you can send me an email to paulsathuda.tv brother peter okay I can't hear a wonderful call. I'm really excited about that because I'm also from California. Yeah. Let's go back to your Facebook information, facebook.com slash. Majid Mahmoud, M-A-J-E-D-M-A-H-M-O-U-D. Okay, perfect. Just like it sounds. And that's on the screen anyways as well. Okay, so great. So they can send you private messages and post yeah. there. And Okay. What about Twitter? <coughs> Twitter, same thing, but at the end there's number two. Okay, per I like Twitter too. It's intellectual. You can drop uh, yeah. nice information for people. I yes, like that. It can be fitna too. <laughs> yeah, just like the, fa just like the Facebook. It can be yeah. a waste, waste, waste of time, but make sure, I'm t advice, if you have Twitter, Facebook, make sure you renew your intentions. Yeah, really, subhanAllah. Make sure you renew intentions. Yeah, subhanAllah. Okay, what about the YouTube channel as well? Because this also is one of those things yes. that can be beneficial and sure, also, right? absolutely. So it's the same thing, Majid Mahmoud, then number two afterwards. Okay, cool. No. And what advice do you have for the youth on Facebook? It's just like you said, renew your intentions. Yes. Okay. Sincere advice? Yeah. They might not like me if I say it. They know it. Most youth don't need Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, right. And right. they realize, and because I'm saying it because I talk to them because I'm, I'm technically still amongst the youth. You're also youth, man, <laughs> Up to the 40, you're still youth. <laughs> they regret, they had that sense of regret at the moment they shut the phone. I think, where was I for the past half hour, one hour, and so on? Yeah. And they realized they didn't do much benefit. They, with, they w saw images they're not supposed to watch, and right, so on, right, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But just renew your intentions, and, and only if you knew. <laughs> yeah, that's Allah right. al-Raqib, the all-watchful, they would think twice before typing something that will be held against them. And if they know Allah al raqib they will think twice before doing a good act as well. Exactly. Brother, I certainly appreciate that advice, and I, I certainly appreciate your time. I look forward to having you back on this program soon, and inshallah. Thank you for your time. I certainly appreciate it. And you guys at home, thank you for watching the Pulse. I look forward to seeing you guys again next time, inshallah. So until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone, Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda, we'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say.
Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home.